Hey everyone, Pupsker here. I beat a lot of games on my PlayStation 5 over the past couple of months, so let's quickly talk about all of the games, starting off with Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now, I only had the last handful of chapters left in this because it's one of those games I started, dropped when I got busy, and forgot to pick it back up. But overall, it was a fun time. Now there's a handful of things you need to know if you haven't played a Final Fantasy game. First off, it's a lot of cutscenes. It's pretty much a full length movie times three. I think there's like nine hours of cutscenes. So a lot of Final Fantasy, it is a JRPG, a lot of cutscenes. Not a ton of combat and only certain areas are more open worldy, explory, but there's a lot of side stuff to do, okay? When you are fighting, a lot of side stuff, a lot of side content, quests, shenanigans, games, and it's a lot of fun if you like doing a bunch of mini games. As you can see, like it's goofy as hell. There are certain areas where there's a lot of side quests and mini games, and then there are other areas where, you know, it's a little calmer, but you go area by area and then beat up all the enemies. Some you have more freedom, some are just like linear, do the story, and it really depends. It's not like the old Final Fantasies, right? Where it was just full open world. No, 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 this is much more on rails. You get locked in like full chapters to do the chapter and then you get more access to go back to areas to do side quests. If you want, always a ton to do. Either way, game is fun. I haven't played the original Final Fantasy a ton. I did a little bit when I was younger, so I always love Final Fantasy games, so I wanted to go back and play this, and I did. It was good, would recommend, but you really need to be in it for like the JRPG shenanigans, because the games are goofy, they're long, and yeah, it took me like 40, 50 hours to beat this one, and you can pump that up so many more hours if you do all the side content, but I kind of rushed this one, so it only took me 40 or so, 50 or so hours, which is kind of funny to think about. It is active combat turn-based, where it's like you just attack, defend, and then you get your ability gauge and you use abilities when you can, right? You look around, you explore, and you use whatever items you get. And then when you start Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you start all over again, level like zero pretty much, and you unlock everything again and go through that part of the Final Fantasy VII story. So that was Final Fantasy VII Remake. Let's talk about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Naturally, since I finished off Remake, I had to pl then play and finish Rebirth, right? Because what, like, why would I? Yeah, I had to start one before I did the other. I already was maybe like 10, 20 hours into this one, but again, I got busy, so... First I beat Remake, then I beat Rebirth. Still a lovely game. And again, it's Final Fantasy, you know what to expect. The difference is this one, I spent like 90 to 100 hours in it, probably like a good 10 to 20 hours were AFK, right? Cause who knows how much I'm actually doing stuff, but I almost 100%ed this game because that's, you know, I wanted to. I was like, okay, this is a lot of fun. I'll do a lot of the side BS mini game shenanigans. So, I would say I got 80 to 90% of all of the game done, which is side content. I finished all the trading card game stuff. I did all of the side quests that I possibly could. I did every open area, but I didn't do every possible thing. I didn't finish off and max out my level. I didn't finish off and fight the bosses at the very, very end that you need to like level up, max level to fight but I did all of the traveling ship stuff. I collected all the treasures and I unlocked all of the final hard mode bosses, hard mode, right? They're like the max level ones where you fight two Titans at a time and then fight the final guy. So I spent so much time in this, but some of the mini games, are just not fun, right? This is the annoying part about playing a Final Fantasy game. You have 10 hours, 15 hours of cutscenes. You have a lot of hours of combat, but a lot of the time in game is spent, if you're trying to 100% the game, on straight up mini games, tens upon tens of hours. The like fun side content is the ones where you go around, find stuff, fight enemies, different bosses, elite enemies, right? That's the fun stuff. But all of the side games where it's like play soccer, oh, you suck at it, whatever, do like chocobo racing. Yeah, some of it, it's very hit or miss. It is a very goofy game, okay? Holy crap. This game seems so much more goofy than Remake, okay? Rebirth up to the goofiness. You have cool characters, but the goofiness is is like up there. You go to the big theme area, like the theme park gamble area. It's pretty much like this game's version of Disneyland or Vegas, right? And that's where most of the mini games are. 
holy shit. It's fun, but like it gets so tiring after a while. So while I love Final Fantasy games, they're great. They do have a lot of bloat and that's definitely a negative depending on what you're doing, right? Like I beat all of those mini games. I did all of the Queen's Guard, King's Guard, I can't remember what it's called, but like there's just so much stuff. I never cared to platinum trophy games because I don't have the patience for it. And this was one that I would never wish that someone wants to platinum because there's just so much boring side mini game content. If you love side mini games, then like maybe you'll want to platinum it. But if not, holy crap, there's a lot. And some of the mini games are so bullshit hard that I honestly was like, I will never 100% this. I think the one that I'm really bad at was like the one, the final one where there's six separate block areas and the guy's gonna go punch you. It's like the 3D fighter. Ah, okay, hated it. But overall, the game itself is great. If you just skip all the side content, all the mini game stuff, it's an awesome game if you don't wanna do that. I really enjoyed the card game uh, mini games and after a while, I just built an OP deck that lasted me like half the game and then I upgraded and rebuilt the OP deck and it lasted me until the final boss, so. Yeah, if you like doing a lot of that stuff, it's great. If not, you can probably get it done in like 40 hours. So would recommend and I love Rebirth. So yeah, huge fan, cheers. The next game I played was Berserk and the Band of the Hawk, a game I bought ages ago physically and I just meant to beat it. This game is essentially like a Dynasty Warriors combat styled game, okay? You play as guts throughout pretty much the entire game if you're just running through story. You beat up enemies and you go through a good chunk of Berserk's story. It's a fun game. You kill hundreds, if not thousands of enemies each mission and you collect objectives and go through the story. Yeah, it's just like straight up a fun beat em up styled game. And once you beat that, you then have endless game modes or you can do harder stuff and you can level up all of your characters to max level in said endless game mode, upgrade their equipment, get them stacked as shit. The upgrade system in this game is really goofy where it's like you upgrade the skills on the item you attach and you get so stacked. But it was a fun game if you just like Dynasty Warriors style, like one really strong dude taking everyone out, fighting like elite enemies and then bosses. Oh, Casca, oh God, Casca, Casca. Damn, dude, Berserk is, it's a trip and a half, but it's a, it's a good game. Like, it doesn't have a ton of useless side BS, so it's one you can just power through very quickly in 10 to 20 hours pretty easily, depending on how much, like, endless mode you do or how much side stuff you try to do if you want 100% the game. But I think there's a game-breaking bug where one of the objectives you will never be able to complete, so it's, like, an impossible trophy, because, like, one of those, I can't remember what they're called, the like barrelets. One of those items you cannot collect no matter what because the game is broken. So either way, it's a lot of fun. We're just playing the trailers in the background so you get an idea of all the games I've been playing. But I honestly had a ton of fun. So yeah, no, we re re replay that, my bad. Either way, 10 out of 10, would play again. It's right up my alley. And yeah, I just wanted to let y'all know what I've been up to when I've been off stream the past couple of months because I've been very burnt out of Warframe. Sorry, it is what it is. So I've been playing a lot of my couch games on my PlayStation and I've been playing other games on stream. It is what it is, I know, I am but one man, so sometimes my brain kills itself and then I get bored playing just Warframe and making just Warframe videos. <sighs> I know, life is a constant struggle of why do we exist, right? Either way, I had a lot of fun with this game. So next up, let's talk about Kingdom Hearts 3. Okay, Kingdom Hearts is the weirdest game series ever from just a casual point of view. I've played like Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, 3. I don't get into the extended games and lore of it, but it is essentially, you are an intergalactic traveler through the Disney IPs, saving the world, fighting the corruption, you know, the heartless, and yeah, just going about your way, fighting, I don't know if it's called the order or fighting the bad guys, and it is a goofy, fun shenanigans game, okay? It is not to be taken seriously whatsoever. You go around with Goofy and Donald throughout, uh, Donald Duck, right? Throughout all, like, eight or so Disney IPs in Kingdom Hearts 3, you just save each world, fight the Heartless, and get a little bit of lore and, like, story through the game. It is very cutscene heavy. It is not a ton of gameplay compared to, like, cutscenes, so... What usually happens is you get a cutscene for like a minute or two, then you play through the level. It's pretty fast if you know what you're doing. And then you go through more cutscenes, you play through the level. Yeah, so on and so forth. There's not a lot of combat 
in between cutscenes, right? Like you'll get max five, 10 minutes of combat and running around before a cutscene, but depending on which area, it's like a minute or two between each cutscene. So it's, it's a weirdly set up game, but it's a lot of fun. Kingdom Hearts has always been one of those series that I cherished and had a lot of fun with, but holy hell, is it just so freaking weird, and I barely even understand what the hell is going on with the story. It's just like straight up TLDR, you travel across the universe saving Disney worlds and worlds and fighting the evil heartless enemies. <laughs> It's just, you know, the same old idea. The extended full lore of it's like, oh, goddamn novel and a half worth of info. But that's like the TLDR. So you can just see how many ra random Disney IPs you fight through. So I've always loved the game and I had a lot of fun playing through it. But yeah, it got a little boring. You can do a lot of side collectible stuff and like side leveling if you want. I did max out my ships and stuff and did some of that exploration. And once you beat the game, like with all the other games, there's like just new game plus style combat if you want, more trophies to collect, and you can over level and fight like the end game final bosses that are like highest level type of deal. So it's a lot of fun. I always enjoy my time with it, but it's not for everyone. That's for damn sure. It's like an RPG magic and melee style game. And it's not that hard or anything, but if you want it harder, you just turn it up to the hardest difficulty and then just fight all the hardest enemies at endgame. So, yeah, had a lot of fun with Kingdom Hearts 3, though, so 10 out of 10. The next game I finished up was Ghosts of Tsushima. It was a beautiful game, okay? Loved it, 10 out of 10. Think of it like an open-world Ubisoft game, but... You know, it's like an Assassin's Creed style game, except you have a lot of versatility. You have bows, you have assassinations, melee. Man, I love assassinating in this game. A ton of armors and so many upgrades to go through. I myself 100%ed the base of the game, right? I played through all of the story. I did all of the open world collectible objectives, etc. Worth my time, the ones that you can actually find on the map. I didn't collect all artifacts and stuff because I would rather just never do that. It's a waste of time and it's not fun. But this game, I'd say I got done in about 40 hours. You can get it done a lot faster if you power through the main story, if you ignore all side missions. But no, this game is a treasure, beautiful game. Great story. A lot of the side missions are actually like really nice, beautiful stories. You learn good lore and it's a good extended side quest because a lot of side quests, it's like part one of nine, part one of seven, part one of three. So you go along the story of the side quest characters and they join you along your fight and you learn a lot about them. And there's a lot of trials and tribulations, a lot of deaths, a lot of lives. It is wartime in Tsushima, right? You're in Japan fighting off the Mongols, right? It's one of the Japanese islands. I would have to actually double check to make sure I'm not just being stupid, but I think that's the general idea of that. Oh, and it is an adventure game by Sucker Punch. Ah, very, very beautiful, okay? It's a great game. I cannot recommend it enough. Can't wait for the second game. But man, it was just good vibes all around. <laughs> well, vibes depending on how you're looking at it. Like the game itself was great. And it wasn't so over bloated like some of the games that uh, we can play, right? Like Final Fantasy, let's be real, way over bloated. But this game, it's not overly bloated. There's a lot of open side stuff to look at, discover weapons, armor, upgrades, but it doesn't go too overboard. I could probably go and platinum this game right now if I just quickly Googled some of the last trophies, right? But I don't really care about any of that. It's not an incredibly difficult game. You can full on be an assassin or you can full on be a samurai style combat where you just murder enemies openly. You have a ton of gadgets, tools with your bow, your ninja tools, like it's great. I loved it, 10 out of 10. There's a, there's a reason why I loved all these games, right? I bought these knowing them I would probably love them. So that's why all of them are like, oh, great. Cause you know, I usually try to buy games that I plan to enjoy. So yeah, I played all of these just on my couch, chilling with my dog, stoned as a baloney or being a stony baloney, I should say. So it was good times. Remember everyone to like, subscribe, all the socials are Pupsker in the description. And I have an Epic Games creator code Pupsker as well. Ah, so many good PlayStation games that I've wanted to play through. 
And now I have. Like, I bought no new games. All of these games, outside of maybe like the newest Final Fantasy, I've had for the past handful of years. So I'm just happy that I finally got to enjoy them. And a lot of them had really good stories. So let's go and talk about the final game that I played these past months. And everyone, the final game I played was Marvel Spider-Man. And I also 100%ed the game pretty much. I didn't go out of my way to fully complete challenges. I just played through the game, did all of the open world stuff and got that 100% completion mark on that. But again, I didn't like platinum trophy. This game was beautiful, okay? I know now why everyone hyped it up and called it a must play. And that's why I bought it all those years ago. I bought all of these games pretty much for my PS4, and I played them on my PS5, apart from Final Fantasy Rebirth, okay? Because that one was like the newest, newest one, and is just on PlayStation 5. But oh my god, this game was great. The main story was really good. You go through, I'd say, three main story arcs, all of them really nice. I don't like, but it also makes sense how you very slowly unlock, uh, unlock the open world activities. It makes sense, but I just wish they would have unlocked some of the fighting ones a little bit earlier. If you know, you know. It's just like, hey, I like doing more open world stuff while I'm doing the earlier game stuff, not just like unlocking it slowly. It, It's just a pet peeve. It's not really a big deal, but the game itself, amazing. I had a ton of fun with it and I put in, I don't know, probably like a solid 20, 30 hours, maybe even 40 hours. But I think honestly, it wasn't the longest game at all. Maybe 20 hours. It was a ton of fun. Ghost of Tsushima was like much longer. Kingdom Hearts was a little longer. A lot of those games are longer because I did a lot of the side content, but this game was only like 20, 30 hours with side content or maybe 40 hours. God, see, I'm all over the place. I'd actually actually have to double check, but I got a ton of trophies done. I got a ton of combat done and I had my fun. So those were the majority of the games I've been playing these handful of months on my PlayStation. I was playing random games on PC here and there. I stream randomly, right? 24 seven streaming on Twitch I was doing for a while. And now I'm just taking a break because I'm more burnt out of doing stuff, but that's okay. But I thought it would be a good time while Warframe was calm to play through a bunch of beautifully great games that I bought the handful of years. And you know, I was right. It was a good idea. Now I might play through, oh, more maybe COD Black Ops 6 because that came out. Maybe I'll do some more Warframe videos or maybe I'll go play some Fortnite and make some Warframe or sorry, some Fortnite videos on my second channel. Not 100% sure, but I had a lot of fun with Spider-Man. Maybe eventually I'll buy Spider-Man 2. I think that one's Venom, right? And then I could buy Spider-Man Miles Morales. I think it's a separate game, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but... All great games. I knew I'd like all of these games, so I just wanted to talk about them. Either way, let me know what you think of everything, everybody. I thank you for being here, and I will see you next time. Cheers.